What are the top 10 books for business and personal development? Well, find out part one of that. T today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wander Be Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 125. All of our show notes can be found over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, 4th of July is upon us. It's it's It should be the biggest day of summer, but I'm feeling like it's not going to quite be what it usually is. So I have no plans to go outside. I mean, yeah. maybe outside in the safety of my neighborhood to see. Actually, we got some fireworks that we're going to shoot off with uh, Charlie. He's going to be over here Oh, with us. that's awesome. He'll love that. So we'll do that. And I think he'd like that better than trying to see fireworks somewhere. Right. I think here, here in uh, the Fort Myers uh, 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 Cape Coral area, I think all of the fireworks have been canceled except for one show. And you can, uh, they have different places, that different parking lots and stuff that you can kind of get into your car and go watch it from your car. Kind of interesting, but but fireworks are completely legal in Florida. So I'm sure the next, they actually have been going off a lot this week anyway, but over the next couple of days, I'm sure it's just going to be fireworks central everywhere you look, you know, you for know people it. doing in their backyards and stuff like that. So it's going to be a very interesting 4th of July, a little very different than uh, the normal celebrations that go on. And, and then it, I think isn't, um, the, isn't there a big celebration at Mount Rushmore tonight? Uh, I, I, that's what yeah, I heard. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of drama going around. There, there is a huge amount of drama going on about that, no, but it'll, mask, it'll be interesting. Masks to see. are optional. You got the Lakota <laughs> tribe uh, uh, finding, and I'm supportive of those guys. Yeah, me too. Crazy. So it's it's um it's wild times we're living in, and I am as we as we record this, Matt's still in Florida. I'm here in Vegas, and yeah, we're just going to say, what, 10,000 cases yesterday in Florida? Yeah, the last two days, down. yeah, the last two days it spiked over 10,000. So Nevada it's pretty, is it's also scary. spiking. Yeah. We haven't shut things down. We're just, we're not moving into the next phase, which I think what, you know, so they pause the next opening, but I'm telling you, people are coming into, already yesterday, the traffic on the roads was definitely looking like oh, the yeah. uh, California generally is where most people come from, but the people are in Vegas. And uh, I just hate to say it, but I just feel, even though the, I'll have to tell you, the casinos are being very rigid on, they take your temperature. If yeah. you don't wear a mask, they, they make you leave. Give you the boot, yeah, yeah. I guess that's something. I still think I'm not anywhere going near that. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Like what, take it three weeks and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's Definitely. interesting. Down here, it's still uh, Lee County, which is where Fort Myers is, still has had no mask regulations. and. Uh, uh, it's just so interesting to hear the different sides of the story of the, you know, what people, you know, what their opinions are on it. And, you know, you, you can't, uh, you know, just ignore people's opinions. They're their opinions, you know, whether you think it's right or wrong. Well, that's your own opinion, right? So it's just so interesting to hear how just polar opposite the opinions right. are on that whole thing. And that's, um, I don't know. I don't know how we're ever going to really get through this if we don't try to slow the spread. I mean, we've been talking about flattening the curve forever. We never even got to that point. And now we're like going the wrong way. So it's I, I just I just feel that it, for me, I'm just adjusting to how I can control my mindset right. each day, be the safest that I can be, make my personal choices and keep myself safe. And that's everybody around me. That's my family, that everybody. And I, I hear what you're saying. and I appreciate that. I mean, I have to tell you the one thing that really got me angry yesterday is the news story that I read online now about some um, I think it was out of Alabama I think it's other places too, college students playing the game of oh, inviting yeah. people who are sick with yeah. the virus to a party, ponying up a pot of money and whoever uh, gets sick first gets to, I mean what in the world is it's going a, on that, that, that this young people thing. think that that group of people think that they're invincible and they'll just have a little flu bug and they'll make some money from it. I mean, right. seriously, it's just talk about being so selfish. What right. are you going to sit yourself somewhere and never go around people who are sick or your family or your 
older people that's in your the family. whole point of that you know it's not about you people can do whatever they want to to their own bodies i have no right. fear about that but go the whole it, mask you better the whole... go stay in a room with all the other sick people that you're going to get sick that's with. right you know and speaking of masks i love going online you know to any of the social media sites which actually you know uh, yeah know exactly what you're looking at if you have clicked on one mask ad you, oh my god the oh mask god. yeah it's just but i think in the it's way a new it's, creative it uh, is. What, I, i'm all about getting the gator now i want yeah. i think you have gators from hiking but i want the neck ones you know yeah. where you could just pull yeah. it up and it could be a, a fashion statement it's it's <laughs> funny because i've been you know i have not been really all that happy with some of the masks that i purchased so i'm like i, I don't say i, I, I haven't, haven't found i haven't one. i haven't ordered like 10 but i actually found one that i actually really really loved and it's from a company called la linen uh, not sponsoring the podcast, by the way, but it's a uh, shout out to LA Linen. Yeah, it is. They were you know, the price was really great. The turnaround time was amazing. Uh, you know, shooting it across the country, and I uh, they are uh, it's cool designs it's or what? Bigger. No, the designs are kind of uh, just really just basically Blank. flat colors, but there's a lot of different colors. Uh, but the comfort, the fit of it is really good. And there's a lot of room in the front. That's so you're I not want. feeling like it's like right yeah. on your face. So okay. I really like that. So uh, if I had to shout out to anything in particular so far, that'd be the one I would give the shout out to. So although I'm just constantly looking because those know, ads are too. always in your face, right? So like that one is not going to work. I've tried right. that one. You know, it's just because. I mean, of, of course, space, because but... I, wear, I wear glasses when I drive. So oh, I have to have the little up. nose. You have to have the nose wire or else it doesn't work for me or else they get all fogged up. So anyway, it's well, just anyway, funny. I, things we've adopted, adjusted I, to. I, I appreciate people, uh, their entrepreneurial style during, uh, you know, COVID and uh, to, to help get the mask out. The mask, getting a mask is no longer a problem like it was months ago. Oh, so. no, it's funny. Or hand sanitizer because now there's all these entrepreneurs. This is the point I was making, I think, last week on our yeah. show about how what this is. This is what people do. You know, the, there's people that sit and panic and be negative and, right. and there's crazy people who are saying let's play a game to see who gets sick and then you have people who are the entrepreneurs of the world going well let me go find out how i can make masks so from little mom and pops to, to, to seamstresses who created side businesses right now um what it first began when you couldn't even get the masks but to your point now you see them everywhere and now you don't have to worry about the only thing you can't find is the wipes the uh the sanitizer, the uh, antibacterial <laughs> wipes, it. and I'm like, why hasn't another company beyond Lysol, whoever owns Lysol, or the main ones, what's the problem with producing those? Really, I, w I was in Publix, which is the supermarket chain down here, and yes, I found, Publix. yeah, I found these, I found some wipes, and I was all jazzed. There was like a hundred in a box. I'm like, well, this is really fantastic. So I get it home, and I'm opening it up, and I thought they looked kind of small, but I was opening it up, and I was trying to like unfold the wipe, but it was just this little tiny square and that's what? all i swear to god there it wasn't even open up into a sheet a, a two by two inch square pretty much you could like clean your glasses one lens oh. in your glasses okay it was just, it's funny i thought this is the funniest thing i have ever seen so you can get hand sanitizer you can find other stuff now it's just crazy how that all works out you know uh, but i i just find it intriguing that we've all just okay this is what we live with now young kids are you know, in the PSAs, and it's like they're just adapting. We all just yeah. wear masks. Yeah, you know? it's uh, really so. interesting. All right, well, you know, shall, we we get up, shall we get on with it? Let us talk about, you know, because this is what we want to talk about. I think a lot of people are looking at there's time to read or listen to books. And so we brought out a post that we have as part of one of our courses, and we're going to cover the first five this week and the next five. And these are books that stand the test of time for me, and I'm talking That's a little cool. bit about how I'm starting to reread some of them. So let's jump in. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, you are in episode 125 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. We actually have some great notes over in the show notes today, along with the links to these books where you can go get them on Amazon. Uh, uh, or wherever you choose, but there's links to Amazon for it. So there's 10 books for business and personal development method I have found have been that these are just my personal uh -huh. um, favorites. There's more, but when I was looking at this list, I was like, wow, I wonder if I want to swap anything out. Is there anything else that has had the impact on me? And honestly, there's more books that I like, but these would stay on my top 10 yeah. test of time. And I know you're not a big fiction reader. I think I'm more of a fiction reader. I mean, you're more of a fiction reader. I'm a nonfiction reader. Yeah. You, 
There, is there any nonfiction books before we jump into mine that come to mind for you? No, there's actually a couple on your list that actually I've read. So, right, you know, we'll there are, that I, and, and I'm familiar with all of them because you just, you know, these are classic uh, books that you have on your list for the most part. And uh, with some really good, uh, you know, sound and things that do stand the test of time as far as, you know, things that can help you out, you know, with your mindset and everything, motivation and everything. So, so. you know, if you're not into reading, I, I, um, I like reading, but I have to, I like reading, but I have to tell you my eyes have gotten so much different that I, I have a hard time reading books that are smaller, you know, even with reading glasses. So uh, audio is awesome. It's a great way to listen to books and it's That's easy right. and it's all tied into everything or get a, subscription on audible or they generally can th they threw in the audio maybe audible is part of amazon i know amazon owns everything right so um <laughs> yeah, exactly yes uh, yeah i'm not sure but you could but i have started listening to i find listening to books is also cool too just like podcasts and i like to go to the real books sometimes um I which is too. what i on the ones i'm going to talk about here and then i have them also when you're traveling it's great since most of us are not traveling, this is the whole idea that you maybe have some downtime that you could revisit or for maybe for the first time, pick up some books that could impact your business and your personal development. So the first five on the list is what we'll cover today. And these are always the five I talk to everybody in my coaching business with or when I'm teaching a class. And I always start with number one, the classic Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I just believe that that book was the beginning of so many other self-help books. Mm -hmm. And all the way up to the secret, the law of attraction. And, and back in the 20s and 30s, when he was researching all of this, you know, the whole deal here is Hill interviewed 500 people that were all the people of the time, but famous people, Gar Carnegie. And he just did this all this masterful research and then put it all together in this book about um, some key. There's like and there's been other things written about it, like 10 to 12 principles success principles but the ones that stand out for me we could spend a whole hour just talking about each of these books so i'm just going to yep. hit some highlights but a couple things that get that i love about think and grow rich that i have in my article today is the starting point of all achievement is desire so a couple themes are going to be in these books that are on my list and it's about getting to this burning desire so napoleon hill used the word of burning desire which is passion which is you really know what it is that you're wanting to do which is also tied to this why you know what are you passionate about sure. um and so that it, it there's a lot in that book that helps with that and probably my favorite quote of all time there's a couple of them in there like an eleanor roosevelt quote but this one from hill is whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve so that is the basis of so many hundreds and probably thousands of books about whatever you focus on in your mind and you so you think about conceive and you believe which is that burning desire you can achieve it so intention focus and this is this is what i do this is what i get have to get myself back to when uh -huh. i'm going off onto tangents especially right now and i'll let myself uh, you know you know the, the the thing for me is to turn on the tv and start watching some of that stuff and then i find myself because i want to know what's going on but then if i don't if i watch too much of it i'll go down that path now i've got all my focus and intention on the things that are negative that i don't and i have to stop and re-get my brain back to something positive so I can attract the things I want in my life that are positive, right? right. And, and the things that I want. So so I love that. It gets into some other things that are powerful, like the power of a mastermind. He really has some great things in the book on that. There's just, it's just really the secret is, the, the whole thing is like, what's the secret? And the secret is that right there, that it, when you have a burning desire and you're focused on, and you know what it is that you want to do and you put your intention on it, you can create it. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of other stuff and backstories and how the great, you know, back in that day, the Carnegie's, um, I can't, I'm not even thinking about who, uh, who are the other people he interviewed, um, had similar themes to why they were so successful. And it wasn't about making good business decision. It was, they believed in what they were doing. Yeah. So good one. It, could, it never gets old. I go back to it all the time. And I love that one. The second one is the E-Myth Revisited. This is the absolute key book for all small business owners and the the um it's called the the e-myth or entrepreneurial myth by michael gerber the subtitle is why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it this has been around a long time it's been rewritten there's different versions of it for managers and this but just get the plain old e-myth revisited is the one i would get 
the one we have a link to. And in our, this is a, the couple principles in this book are the, are the core principles that we have in WBNL coaching exactly, and what we do and just to hit on them. We've talked about this in some previous podcasts, but I love this book. I recommend it to everyone. If you're only going to read three book, two or three books, the first two or three on this list are the ones I always recommend. So for the, premise here is that a lot of people are awesome technicians. They, they know how to sell. They know how to fix motorcycles and how to bake pies. They know how to do whatever the technical thing is. White. <laughs> Matt is out in the like, 100 degree. Well, I don't know what the temperature is, Matt. Um, it's nice. There's a little breeze today, so it's a little bit nice. I see today. it, but it's the humidity that kills you yeah, in Florida. It, so it you got like 60, 70 percent humidity. Uh, so, so anyway, where was I on the whole, oh, why most small businesses fail is that they're technicians. And I see this in almost 30 years in the real estate business. This sums it up. Yeah. People are good at that do well in real estate are awesome at sales, but they aren't good business people. They don't put business systems in place. That's right. So, so one of the keys is you've got to work on your business while you're in your business. Most people are just consumed by being in the business. They need to work on their business, which means carving time out, hiring a coach, taking some of our training to learn how to do that, to set your perfect week so that you can find time to work on the system so that you have some freedom in your life. He talks about that's things like- goal. That's right. right. He talks about doing things like think like a franchise. Yeah. When you put your business systems in place, you may not want to expand and grow and put your- like I do and have a team here and have a team in Florida and we'll see if they're, you know, if they're, I can help other people do the same thing um, beyond that. But, but the only way to do that is to duplicate your system. So you have to take the time to put the systems in place first, otherwise it's going to fail. And that's why most small businesses fail. Lots more in that book, but that's the keys to that book. And I've listened to that so many times on audio. I like listening to that one on audio as well as this next one. This is my third favorite book. And it's in, so we've gone through personal development, best book, if you're going to just read one, Think and Grow Rich, the classic. Second book for business, first one, small business, the e-myth. And for productivity, uh, reducing your stress, getting things done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. I absolutely love this book. I use these principles all the time. I share it with people because what I like about this guy is he's saying, here's here's the concepts, the method that you want to figure out needs to work for you. So unlike some productivity people say, well, you need the file system or you need the card system or you need to adapt my system. That's a problem because I've learned in coaching that you can't make people adapt to what works for you. You got to figure out each of you listening needs to figure out what style of staying on track with tasks and, and to do's and getting all the things out of your head works for you. And in this day and age, as much as I'm a tech person, I've tried a million apps. I I still go back to the good old yellow pad, legal pad. Yep. I, I have a purple pad and a blue pad, but you know what I'm talking about. And I don't want the legal size. I like the eight and a half by 11. You develop what it is that you like, um, you know, but, but there's a couple things in here that are seriously awesome for time saving because we, we waste, we all waste way too much time when you have a little downtime to work on projects and so forth, taking that downtime to figure out what it is you're going to do. So one of the main premises of David Allen is you've got to get all the stressful thoughts are these unclosed uh, loops that are in your brain. So this is why at the middle of the night, you'll wake up or for me, like I'm in the shower, I'm driving and I'm slowing down for a minute and it's like, Oh, I forgot to do this. Have you, we've all experienced this, right? Absolutely. Oh my God, I forgot to take care of that. So his premise is you've got to take all those open thoughts, get them into a trusted system. That's the part I was just speaking of. You got to figure out what the, he goes through tons of ways to do it. You've got to figure out what the trusted system is. Then you know that your brain knows it's over in this place where I can let it go because your unconscious mind is, if you're not handling it, it's going, Hey, you need to take care of that. You need to take care of that. And it causes stress. And all those little things build up all lots of little things like that build up, let alone the big stressors that are in our lives right right from what's happening in our world to our families to our relationships to where's money coming from those are the things that most people worry about but then there's all of these little tiny things that that you don't understand how much they uh add up 
um, because they're, you're always thinking about them. So, so he just has a, a couple, and there's such a huge fan club, if you will, on getting things done. GTD, just Google GTD. Obviously, read the book, listen to the book, but go and people have adopted his their versions of his principles, and you'll love it. So, the whole idea is you you go, what's the project? What's the outcome at the when it's successful? And then you go and you take some time to list what is the next action line you need to do and when you're done with that, what it is. So you do that first so that you can pick up your projects when you need to do them and just go knock something out instead of spending an hour figuring out what I should go do. Brilliant. Right. Check out getting things done. Okay. Have you ever read that one? Or I have not read that? that. You just heard me talk about it endlessly. <laughs> Not endlessly. Okay. The great thing about it is you have you have really put together a collection of books that really are. Uh, there's a lot of really great input or uh, content to those books, and you know we have incorporated a lot of the different uh, uh, processes and theories and stuff into different parts of what we do with the coaching. So, yeah, I'm familiar in certain ways. And by the way, this is this what we're going through here is one just one of the many units that's in our Align Connect Prosper course. Uh, and we will be, we've all had a lot happening in our lives. We're working on a brand new platform for you, but That's we're right. hoping in the next 30 days or so we'll be announcing a launch and some amazing pricing for people who are on our mailing list. So if you're not already on our mailing list, you need to get on our mailing list because we're going to do some great launch pricing and then the prices are going to go up a little bit more. All right. Number four on my list is the four agreements. Um, absolutely love this book. Really, really work on sharing these principles all the time and, and doing my best to live this in my, these are my agreements um, to live by. And it's called a practical guide subtitle, the four agreements, the practical guide to personal freedom. This is by Don Miguel Ruiz. And here they are very quickly. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Yep. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. God. And there are so many awesome little things in there. This is a small book. It's easy to read. So be impeccable with your word. Just says speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Be aware that the word that you speak against you or to gossip about others is and what that can do. Use the power of the word to just be come from truth and love and not you know, boy, the world could get a lot out of that one right now. <laughs> if you came from that as opposed to tearing people down and being negative and just attacking. Wow. So that's a good one, right? Everybody gets a book. Everybody In the world. gets a book. Get, to be impeccable with your word. Seven means billion also, of those things ordered. The big lesson I learned in this book is to be impe I'm always good with my word with other people, but I don't always do it with myself. So the biggest thing for me is yep. keeping integrity about what I'm going to say about taking care of myself and the things I need to do. And so we project a lot, all that onto other people. Take the next two, taking things personally and making assumptions is the, to me, the root of most miscommunication and then conflicts. Yeah. And then probably on a global scale, wars and altercations that happen there, because it's a lot about that, right? Sure. Leaders, people, we're all leaders in our own right. So this says that nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of what's happening for them. And we're all mirrors in our relationships. And we project out things that we want to work on for ourselves for the most part. So we're talking a little bit on life coaching, higher level right here. But when you're immune to the opinion of others, and this is what people can't do. Most people, they're like, Matt said this to me. He, I am taking that personally. I'm not trying to take it personally, but I am because I'm thinking about it. I can't let it go. He must, then it moves on to the next one. He said this, and now I'm making assumptions. He must be meaning this. This is probably the worst one because I Absolutely. do this and I have to catch myself. And so what I've learned to do since I, for years now, is I really do my best to have open, honest communication with people. And I used to not do that because I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And, and then that's, then it runs into, well, he's thinking about this and it causes all this drama. And then you, when you, and it goes on and on and on, which causes more stress. And then you finally have the, the guts, the, the, like, let's get to the bottom of this and you talk it out. So if you think about a conflict you've had with someone, business, personal, and you did make assumptions and you took it personally, you don't know where the other person's coming from. You know, I don't know what you're going through. I can say I know how you're feeling, but I don't, I'm not you. No. I don't know. I just can try to empathize and feel. And then if I hear you say something to me and I take it personally, I allow it to hurt my feelings. And then I make assumptions about what you must have been doing. And I make it about me. 
Sure. And, and, and that's the problem. And that's not what happened in the conflict, the, the issue. It was just what was happening. And so when you're able to realize that everybody, we all use each other to sort of bounce stuff off of. And if we make assumptions, and then when we clear the air, the people are like, what? Where did, where did you get that? I know. You Almost know? every time that will happen, too. And, think, and, and, and you have gone down a path that has been sometimes could be very detrimental. You know what I mean? Absolutely. As far as your attitude. So well, and it can go on. You just have to. I know. But I, I, it happens I've, all the time. I've had family members. Uh, we have a family member situation right now that mm -hmm. is all about those two right there. And there is no, won't, nobody will, they won't talk to each other. Yeah. No one will bend. Okay, right. Nobody will bend or, and it's just like, that's it. And they, and if once they finally, they've made assumptions on how the other person feels and what they're doing and, name calling and all this yeah. right so in the last one always do your best simply states you know your best changes moment to moment it's going to be based on how you're how you're feeling mentally healthy under any circumstance just do your best and know that you're best. and that that's a self-judgment one sometimes like oh i should have don't use should and could and would i should have done this better and it's like you know what if you just did your best today let it go tomorrow it might be different because we some of us have these standards for ourselves that are just way too high and sure. you know and you cause all this self abuse judgment regret not worth it so those are the four agreements brilliant brilliant stuff the last one we talked about last week was eat that frog the subtitle of this is 21 great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less time and it's a Brian Tracy book. It's probably the shortest little book you'll ever read. So if you're not into reading, go get that one. And if you're a procrastinator, go get that one yeah. or download yeah. it and listen to it. And right from Tracy's um, book, he says that your frog should be the most difficult item on your to-do list, the one you're most likely to procrastinate. Because if you eat that first, then it will give you energy and momentum for the rest of the day. But if you don't, and you let them sit there on the plate and stare at you while you do a hundred unimportant things. It can drain your energy and you won't even know it. And for all of us, it's in sales. That frog is generally prospecting. Exactly. I call lead generation or attracting new business. So there it is. I've just summed the book up for you. But if you want the 21, the 21 uh, ways to stop procrastinating and we all do it and we all do exactly what I just talked about. Find 20 other things to do today and not the thing that's going to generate business for yourself. You know what's um, funny about that? that one. Yeah, what's, what's funny about that to me is I think everybody in, at some level knows uh, uh, w when they're procrastinating, you know, you can't really hide that too too well. But this is a book I think, I, and I haven't done this yet, but when I get back home, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to order that book. And I think that's a, one of those books that just needs to be sitting on your desk. Yeah. <laughs> A simple read maybe a good point. But, but something that's just there to remind you that you know what here you know what you might be doing that today because it is very Honestly, easy to fall back down into the that. book cover really or just like a frog yeah you could get a frog that's and you could point. put it on your that's thing good. and we that's what we should pass out at wbno coaching yeah, exactly. everyone gets a frog yeah <laughs> it's a lot like you know getting the monkey off your back you know what i mean yeah. same type of uh concept a little bit so uh absolutely you don't want to carry that stuff around with you and that frog looking at you mm -mm, not good all right so that's the five the first five on the list if you want to hear the next five tune in next week and we will cover yeah uh, Dan O'Brien's yep oh, six through ten list and good on stuff the on end. there good stuff on there just a little sneak you know there's uh, one of my favorite business books is good to great and that's on that list so we're gonna talk about that next week I love that oh, and then good. and Simon Sinek uh, Simon Sinek is always always inspirational so I know he's on your list as well too so there you go that's gonna be good stuff all right watch this space you're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, well, that's a wrap for another WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, episode 125. All of our show notes over in the episode vault at WBNLpodcast.com. John Bryant, it's good stuff, you know, and we've talked about this in more than one time on the podcast that I'm really not a nonfiction reader, but there are some of those books that I really would like, that I know a lot about, but I really think I am going to uh, purchase. Another book I don't think is uh, that's on the list that my Sweet Pea read recently was Grit, um, that I, I forget who the author is on that, but we'll put that in the show notes. I um, I need to, I, I have that book, I need to read that, I, I'm not even brought that with me now. I was I trying to that. remember the one that Laura recommended, Yeah, that we should add that. Yeah. And if anybody's listening and, you know, come to our uh, show notes there's a there's a comments area and you can post you can post the you know what are, what you think are the best books we'd love to hear from you on that we right? would indeed love to hear that and so here's the other thing though 
if you don't, there are so many, like, uh, I want to say cliff notes, right? That's what I remember from school. Right, right. There are synopsis. There's various things that are online. There's a lot of stuff that's free that's basically, you know, what are the key points in this book? You can get a lot of that. I really think there's a lot, obviously, more to reading the whole book. But if you don't have that time and you just want to grab it, listen to it or get the cliff notes or, but just, you know, because you, but I think each of us gleans different lessons and different things from I think so, so. I don't, so don't, I think so too. don't shortcut yourself I guess is even though I just said that maybe you shouldn't shortcut yourself because you maybe get a different, different well there's nothing wrong with maybe bookmarking that so you can go back to a certain thing if you're thinking about it. that's why I like to have the physical book because even if you're not reading, I write in the you can, books you can see well that's true too I've highlighted a lot too but you can you can see you know if you just see it it kind of gives you a little you'll take a little short little walk down memory lane and a good great's a good example of that because I've had that yeah. I've read that book years and years and good years. Well, we'll talk about that because there are some very good principles in that book uh, yeah. for all businesses and I like it so we'll talk about that one yeah so what else so you we already said we weren't going to be you know going out and doing anything you have anything maybe on the menu for to, for uh, the fourth you, you thinking yes. about that yes but we're barbecuing potato salad we've Woo-hoo. got we've got beyond burgers because I like those vegetarian plant yeah. based ones and some hot dogs and potato salad and we're gonna have some fun Yep, we're, we're going to do a much smaller than that, but hot dogs are definitely on the list, and I'm looking forward to that because it's been a while since I've had a dog, so I'm looking forward to, to we're gonna that. we some grilled yeah. sauce with bratwurst. Ooh, that sounds good. Have a little charcoal grill, Weber. Having so much fun grilling on that. Uh, the real charcoal taste. Very cool. Uh, I did uh, learn a little tip. Uh, I forgot where I read this this morning that people should really be aware because here are two things that do not mix on, well, excuse me, here is another two things that do not mix well with fireworks. Okay. And can you guess what it is? It's kind of random, but can you guess what it is? Uh, no. Hand sanitizer. Oh, hello. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so mind your hand sanitizer use. I started to say alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, I started well, to say not, alcohol, but exactly I was thinking right. of people being stupid, but right. okay, but alcohol, alcohol in your hands. Of alcohol. So yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't be too uh, uh, crazy with your hand sanitizer as you're holding your sparkler. <laughs> okay, there you go. We're going to leave you with that tip. Have a safe, if you're listening while we record this, uh, for the weekend we record this, have safe, safe and happy and healthy Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, that's right, everybody. And if you are out and about, and even if you're not, be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm-hmm.